Bible says, For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? Luke chapter 9. I was recently able to connect with Jason Burmis, host of the new show, The Info Warrior. I asked Mr. Burmis to answer a few questions for the Monte Collier Report, and he agreed. Here is the interview. Having observed Jason Burmis's activity on the internet, I noticed that he rejects Christianity, and I also noticed that there is a considerable atheist following uh, to his show. So the first four questions I ask deal with atheism. Jason, are you an atheist? If so, then why do you consider yourself to be an atheist? Why should atheists take your claims seriously? How many atheists would you say make up your movement? Finally, do you think your movement would be stronger if everyone became atheistic? To this, Jason replied the following, quote, I am certainly not an atheist. However, I do not subscribe to any major religion either. I think everyone should take my claims seriously because of the evidence I present via mainstream news articles, video clips, and interviews, not my personal beliefs regarding religion. I have no idea how many atheists are part of the truth movement, however I think we need to reach out to as many people as possible with this message regardless of whether or not they believe in God." End quote. I then ask, do you have an ethical theory? For example, Many of Ron Paul's followers are proponents of Ayn Rand's ethical egoism. Could you identify your personal ethical position? Seeing how ethics impact politics and acknowledging that the ethical moral standards of the average person in the late 1700s was congruent with Protestant Calvinistic adherence to the Ten Commandments, and seeing that today's people and their politicians have little adherence to Protestant morality, do you think a major ethical moral change would first have to occur within our population before significant change could follow? Before the American Revolution took place, there was a Protestant spiritual awakening known as the Great Awakening. Is something akin to this needed today? Finally, Patrick Henry, in the Anti-Federalist Papers, argued against standing armies. He also argued that the President should not be the head of the army, Commander-in-Chief. Do you think he may have been right? Jason Burmis responded, quote, As far as my ethics go, I try to treat others how I would like to be treated for the most part, and I try to do what I believe is morally right. I do not adhere to any one set of ethics or beliefs, and as far as the army question, that's why we used to have checks and balances, so that the president could not just declare war. Now they just call it a conflict and take Congress completely out of the relevant picture." End quote. I finally asked the following, Do the people of the United States of America deserve to be delivered from the ever-increasing tyrannical government? If you believe that the people of the United States do deserve to be delivered from the tyranny, then can you please explain why they should be delivered? Finally, how exactly will the people be delivered from the increasing tyranny? Jason responded, quote, No large group of people should ever be subject to a tyrannical power in control of their lives. That being said, it is a reality that evil does exist, and people increasingly need to understand that it is their duty to stand against it whenever it is recognized and identified. This is also the way it is defeated. When the masses can recognize an enemy, they can take action to defeat it as well." End quote. Well, I'd like to go ahead and first thank Jason Burmas for taking the time to answer those questions, and now I'll go ahead and give my commentary on this interview. We have learned that Jason Burmas publicly rejects atheism, but he also publicly forsakes Christianity, the Bible, and the God of the Bible. He is a heathen, but one who wants to reach out to all types of people, one who wants to save the world from tyranny, or at least the United States. His ethical theory is that a subjective pragmatism. Like many today, he has been taught by our wicked public schools and media that the Bible is false, and that there is no such thing as absolute right or wrong. The Bible describes men like Jason Burmis when it says, quote, 
The way of the fool is right in his own eyes. End quote. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15. The Bible goes on to say, quote, Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes, and prudent in their own sight. End quote. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 21. That's what God thinks about pragmatism. He thinks it is foolish. And God is right. For if anything can be morally acceptable, then morality ceases to exist. If anything can be true, then truth has no meaning. The principle of pragmatism is hopelessly self-contradicting. For to assent to the proposition, there is no truth, is to immediately contradict it, thus proving it false. Jason Burmis believes that no large group of people should ever be subject to a tyrannical power in control of their lives. Now, Jason is a young man, and maybe he hasn't studied anarchism. Maybe he doesn't realize that the anarchists use the same notion as a basis to argue that all prisons should be emptied. All prisoners should be released. The bottom line is that some people deserve to be punished. They deserve to have their freedoms removed. This is why we have a judicial system, to protect men and their property from criminals. Likewise, God also doesn't think that everyone deserves to be free. God has promised to send individuals as well as entire nations to the prison of eternal damnation for not obeying his moral laws, for not believing his word and gospel. The Bible says, quote, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. End quote. Psalms 9.17 Now this nation has certainly turned from God, and God is now the enemy of this nation. And God will destroy this wicked nation if it does not repent. God is destroying it right now. The Bible says, quote, But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore he was turned to be their enemy, and he fought against them. End quote. Isaiah chapter 63, verse 10. You can't win a fight against an omnipotent God. Jason Burmis, Alex Jones, and people like them, they want to free the United States from tyranny. But freedom from puny, finite tyrants is not that important. The kingdoms of this world are not that important. Satan offered Christ all the kingdoms of this world if he would just worship him, and Christ turned them all down. Jesus said, quote, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. End quote. Matthew chapter 4, verse 10. Being perfect God and perfect man, the second person of the Trinity incarnate, obeying God's law for his people, Christ had his priorities correct. God always comes first. This is why Jesus says, quote, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. End quote. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. The God-fearing Puritans sought the Lord first. That's why they came to this nation, and all these things, freedom, free speech, freedom of religion, these things were added unto them. The English-speaking colonists of North America sought God first. This was called the First Great Awakening. And all these things, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, capitalism, these things were added unto them. The Calvinistic forefathers of the United States knew this important point. So, Mr. Burmis, I ask you, what will it profit you if you free the United States, if you free the entire world, but die and go to hell forever? The Bible says, quote, For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world, and lose himself, or be cast away? End quote. Luke chapter 9, verse 25. Jason Burmis, repent of your sins and believe the gospel. Put the God of the Bible first, and trust in Scripture alone. For the Bible says, quote, Thy word is truth. End quote. John chapter 17, verse 17.